I've talked about a bunch of different Arch Linux installers in this channel, from Arch Install, which ships with the main Arch Linux ISO, to Anarchy, which has a GUI to install Arch. But all of them are basically doing the same things in the background. They are running those regular Arch setup commands and require an internet connection to do things like install packages. But today we're looking at something a little bit different. A way to install Arch Linux while you are completely offline. Now, Arch Boot has a bunch of other different things it can do. You can use it to make custom Arch installs, you can use it for a base vanilla install and things like that. But I just want to focus on this one part and then in a future video, I will look at the rest. Are you going to let me record this video or do you just keep being annoying? Hey, what are you going to do? You're just going to chill here, I guess. And this system right here is one I set up earlier. It's a perfectly functional Arch system, and I didn't bother to go and re-give it internet connection, so right now, it is still disconnected from the internet. So let's go and rebuild this system. First thing we need to do is grab a version of Arch Boot that ships with the local package cache. Currently, only one of those versions does, and that is the dash local version. So this can be grabbed over from the link which is on the Arch Wiki, and I'll leave it in the description down below. And there are two files here you might want to grab. The local file and the local SIG. The SIG is obviously there to check the validity of that ISO and make sure it's the ISO you expect it to be. And the key knight among you may have spotted the ARM version as well. That one right here. Now Arch Linux itself doesn't have an ARM version of its distro. But there is a fork of Arch that does support it. So if you're using an ARM based system like a Raspberry Pi, this version here is going to do everything we're doing today but for a system like that. And once you've got that ISO, go and do all of the ISO-y things you would normally do. Either stick it on a thumb drive with DD, CAD, or whatever application you want to use, or attach it to your VM, which is what I'm going to be doing in this case. Once you've done with that, then go and boot your system, and then we'll be ready to go and get through the setup. Now, because this is 2022, I'm going to be using UEFI. But BIOS is supported perfectly fine. The only difference is when it gets to asking you what bootloader you want to use, you'll have some slightly different options. But I'm going to start it like this, and now we just have to wait. Unlike most ISOs, it's not going to start straight away. It needs to go and make sure the package cache is loaded into RAM, and you can actually install stuff from it. So it is going to take a little bit of time. In my case, it usually takes anywhere from 3 to five minutes, it's really not that long. Once all that is loaded, you'll be dropped onto this screen here, where you'll be given basically one of two options. First option is the normal setup, which is what we're going to be doing today. Basically, this will take you through a guided installer, automatically setting up things like petitions, your accounts, things like that. Basically, like we've seen in many other guided installers out there. The second option is the for experts option. Basically, this is the standard Arch install process. So you go and do things like setting up your time zone, setting up your keyboard, setting up your drive, setting up your petitions, all of that stuff. And all that is done by Archboot itself is installing the applications from the package cache. Basically, you would run that command just before chmodding into your new environment. Once you've set up all your petitions and the system is pretty much ready to go. But for us, all we need to do is press the enter key. And if you want to get out of this and then go do the expert install, all you need to do is go down to exit install and then you're good to go. If you want to get back into the guided installer, just run the setup command. Now to show you that I don't have an internet connection, let's just do a ping command first. Let's go and ping Google and see what happens. As you can see, no connection. So let's go and run setup and get back into the installer. Now, like most Arch guided installers, there is a order you are supposed to approach the installer in. That is the order things are listed in. That is the order things are numbered in. But like most of them, you can jump around basically as much as you want and set things as you feel like setting them. Obviously, exiting the installer is the exception, but for everything else, you can basically jump around as much as you want with the exception of installing packages or installing your bootloader before you've actually prepared your storage drive. Now, before we get into doing that, the first thing we should do is make sure we're actually using the correct source. So let's go to select source, and as we can see, setup is running in local mode. So if we did have an internet connection, we could choose between doing online mode or local mode. Online mode is basically just installing from mirrors like you normally would. If you're doing that, 
There are other arch guided installers, which I feel like are a little bit better, but I'll save that for the full video on arch boot. So if we go to prepare storage drive, this is the first thing we need to do. We can go and either manually set up the partitions or we can go to auto prepare. In my case, that's what I'm going to be doing. It'll confirm to us the size that it should have. It is going to give us a size that is considerably bigger than that though. Let's just go and give it 300 meg. That, that'll be perfectly fine. And it will tell us this value again. So I'm not really sure the point of that previous screen. Anyway, next we're going to have our swap. I don't have much storage for this VM. Let's just give it 256. Then we can go and select what we want our root and our home to be. So it starts on ext2. That's a really weird thing to have as your default. I would kind of order that list the other way around. So ext4 would be at the top. If you know what you want to be using, you can always scroll down. And we get a confirmation screen, which is nice to see as well. Let's go to the next step. So right now my root is being set <laughs> quite a bit. Um, 7,500 megs when I have 8 gigs for this system. Let's not give it that. Let's give it closer to, say, let's give it 3,000. 3,000 seems a bit more reasonable. And then the rest of it is going to be given to my home. We also get a super, are you extra specially sure that you want to delete this? In my case, yes, I'm fine. It's going to do the petitioning and that'll take just a moment. After that, we get a question about setting up our FS tab file. The recommended for GPT, according to this at least, is part UUID. I didn't know there was any difference between using most of these actually, but we'll go with the recommended and then it's going to do that. Now we get into the offline installer part. So install packages is going to install everything from a package cache. Now, because this is a package cache, it's going to be very limited in what is included. Basically, we get a fairly minimal Arch system. We get base Linux, we get Linux firmware, NetCTL, and some file system tools, and that's basically it. This is going to take hardly any time because, you know, packages don't need to be downloaded, it's already half done. It will still say downloading because at least from the context of Pac-Man, it's still downloading the packages from a location. It just so happens that location is also local on your system. We had a question about using Pac-Man's GPG files. I'm going to say yes in this case, and then it's done. Now we need to go and install a bootloader. Once again, this is going to be installed locally. So in this case, it detects we have an x64 UEFI system. So it's going to install a UEFI bootloader. In my case, I'm going to say yes. If we said no, obviously that would be in a case where we already have a bootloader set up. So in this case, we get FE stub and grub UEFI. I'm more familiar with grub, so I'm going to go with grub. It'll go and install that for us. You may get a warning for some reason when Grub is being installed, but you can completely ignore that and it's going to install perfectly fine. Then when that's done, it's going to ask you to go and modify your Grub config. In my case, I have nothing to modify here. We'll go and save and quit this when it lets me type. And from there, once you've gone through the extra prompt it shows you, you're pretty much good to reboot. One thing I would recommend doing is at least setting a root password. If you're not going to do any other configuration, at least have a root password set. Arch Linux isn't really happy with root accounts that don't have passwords. But anyway, if we go and restart the system once we remove the ISO, it works like you'd expect the system to work. We have the Arch Linux setting and Arch Linux fallback. I'm not actually sure what that's supposed to do. Anyway, the one we want is Arch Linux. Going into this is going to boot our system and everything should just be working like we'd expect it. I didn't set a host name or anything like that. So my account is just going to be root and my password is going to be the password I use for all of my VMs. Password. At least it should have been if I set the password correctly. Regardless of my incompetence, we know the system works. There are some obvious caveats though. This is going to be a very minimal Arch install. Basically, if it's not in the core utils, it's not Grub, it's not the kernel, sort of don't expect it to be there. You're not going to have a graphical environment, you're not going to have a window manager, you're not going to have a video editor or anything like that. You can obviously install those later on, but from this minimal setup, you're not going to be really getting much, which may cause issues down the line when you do have a connection, if you have Wi-Fi drivers that aren't in the kernel, which many of the Wi-Fi cards out there are like that. And this setup is going to get you a working system, 
But working in the Void or Gen 2 or Arch Linux sense, where you have a thing that boots on your computer, it's not working in the typical desktop Linux sense. You're going to have to put a lot more effort into it afterwards to get it to that state. But if you are one of those people who still like to install from CDs, unlike the base version of Arch, which includes a bunch of extra add-ons you don't really need for an installer, like the man pages and things like that, this actually does fit on a CD. It strips all of that stuff out, and it's below 700 meg. Now, being an offline installer and Arch being a rolling release, you might be worried about whether it's going to be up to date. Now, it's not going to be perfectly up to date with everything being perfect, but this does come up with ISOs really, really often. So the 10th, 20th, and 30th of every month, presumably move for February, is going to have a new version of the ISO with up-to-date packages for that day. So not perfectly up-to-date, but if you are using the latest version of the ISO, at absolute worst, you're like a week and a half out of date, which really isn't that much. If you somehow made it this far and have no idea why you might want to do an offline install, there's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, you just need a working system. Maybe you want to do some data recovery or quickly test something, but you don't want to do a full install and for whatever reason, you don't have a network connection to that system. It's not a super common use case, but maybe that could occur. Secondly, it's much, much quicker to install the packages. If you just want to get those base packages installed and then maybe leave the rest of the packages you want to do to a overnight install or something like that, this will get you there. If you know your way around the installer, you can probably get it done in maybe eight to 10 minutes and most of that time is spent waiting on that initial setup. In which case, just go make a coffee or touch some grass or something like that. 